Catherine Bennell-Pegg will make history next month as she heads to Germany to become the first Australian woman to be trained as an astronaut by an international space agency. And Catherine joins us live now from Adelaide. Catherine, really appreciate you making the time. Thank you. And congratulations. This is an uh, amazing achievement. Tell us, what does astronaut training entail? How long do you need to train before you become a qualified astronaut? Well, I'm so excited uh, to learn to fly and operate the spacecraft that I've spent so many years building. Uh, astronaut training is really intense. Um, I'm going over to Germany to the European Astronaut Centre to do basic astronaut training, which involves learning to do spacewalks and do robotic operations and survival training and learning other languages and all sorts of things you could imagine. And at the end of the training, I will um, be qualified to be selected for an international space station mission. And I'll also come home uh, to help bring the learnings that um, I learn about over there to inform our space sector here and help see what the right path forward for Australia is in human space. Gosh, it really does sound like the stuff of dreams. Once you complete the training, just how rare are those opportunities for qualified astronauts to actually go into space? Is that something you'd be keen to do pretty much as soon as an opportunity comes up? Oh, absolutely. This has been a dream of mine um, for my whole life, pretty much. I've spent uh, many years trying to prepare for applying for an astronaut opportunity whenever it arises. It's typical when you start basic training for many astronauts that there's not a particular flight opportunity that's foreseen, um, but it really will be up to Australia what we feel is the right path forward for this country. And I hope during the training that I demonstrate that there's so much value in human spaceflight. It's not a luxury. It creates access for our scientists and our researchers to do medical research to be used on Earth, to develop critical technologies for sustainability and so many more things. So um, I hope that um, while I'm the first Australian to be trained uh, under the Australian flag, that I certainly won't be the last. And I'll do my best to, to prove that value so that more can follow. Now, Catherine, it is International Women's Day, so I don't want you to be modest when you answer this question. Just talk us through how you've got to this point, how much hard work it's taken. I'm assuming that your IQ is perhaps slightly above <laughs> most of us for you to excel in some of the STEM areas that I see you're qualified in, but you really have done the hard yards in terms of working right around the world to get to this point. Uh, thank you, that's uh, very flattering. Um, for astronaut profiles, they've changed a lot over time. Uh, it used to be really an alpha profile. Now it's more about being the kind of person that can live in a caravan for six months with six other people and get along and do science. But um, for me, I wanted this since I was very young. I was always fascinated um, by science and the stars and I loved outdoor adventures and I was drawn into space for the adventure of it. And I tried to figure out how because there's no real role, role models for me to follow that had done the same path. You know, when I was young, there was no Australian space agency. Um, so I did all the exploration I could. I learned to fly when I was a teenager. I did um, lots of uh, reading physics books and I was determined to uh, be in the space sector. But I left Australia after my undergrad degrees in science and engineering because I didn't think that there'd be a path forward in this country. And I worked overseas for more than a decade um, in a number of different countries doing really amazing space missions that, you know, measured ocean surface currents or um, detected gravity waves on new parts of the space station and was living my dream. But when the Australian Space Agency uh, started to grow a few years ago, um, I was hired back to help contribute here to growing our space sector and to creating the foundations for new missions um, through capability development roadmaps and new mission concepts like the Moon to Mars Trailblazer mission to the Moon. And this has been such a pleasure. And to be able to apply to be an astronaut, to even have the qualifications was such a thrill for me. And now, um, having gone through a gruelling process for the European astronaut selection last year, and um, come very close to making it, but not being quite there. I'd basically put the dream on the shelf and uh, decided to move on and contribute to space in other ways. But then to hear that um, the Australian Space Agency and the European Space Agency uh, agreed to train me because of my performance on that is just so incredible. I didn't realise um, how deep the impact would be for Australian women. I knew it, you know, academically, but 
like downstairs just now, I was at our uh, Space Discovery Centre and speaking with some uni students from here in Adelaide and they were just in tears and so excited that they can have these opportunities in Australia now and what it means for them because they're in a real minority uh, in their university courses and have some concern about what a STEM career would look like for them. So um, I really hope to use this opportunity to show that a compelling career in STEM, uh, particularly for women in Australia, is entirely possible. Catherine, listening to you, we have no doubt that um, you are going to make it and achieve that dream. We all really hope that you do. What would be your ideal mission? And I just feel like we need to make the point that this is also very brave. Most of us would be terrified even at the prospect. I think uh, I wouldn't be human or astronauts wouldn't be human if they weren't slightly afraid um, of sitting on top of a whole load of explosives for every rocket launch. But for me, um, oh, any mission would be a dream because of what it means to contribute. I would love to go on the International Space Station and do a spacewalk, installing maybe an Australian uh, piece of kit, a, a telescope or a camera to look at uh, Australia and, and help detect what's going on in our country um, from an environmental perspective. I'd love to have boots on the moon. That's a, that's a pretty long-term far-out vision, but I think that Australia has so much to contribute to lunar exploration as well from our broader industries. So, yeah. There's, there's so much I'd love to do up there, but I'm most excited about what it means for Australian scientists and researchers and unlocking opportunity for them to put their things in space as well. Catherine, look, again, congratulations and best of luck. We really hope that we get to follow up with you and, and see how it all went and how the astronaut training uh, is because it just sounds fascinating. And look, we wish you all the best with it. Well done. Thank you so much.